The long-awaited TV adaptation of Lock and Key has finally come to fruition at Netflix. Aloha! And according to the little Netflix executive in our heads, it's absolutely binge-worthy. You've watched six episodes already, just let it ride! Yeah, baby! The graphic novel series ran from 2008 to 2013. It was illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez and penned by Joe Hill, who continues his family's legacy of generating nightmares. I'm proud of you, son. At face value, the adaptation follows the comics very closely. Most of the changes can be boiled down to Netflix's aim at a younger audience, while also taking different narrative paths to keep the fans guessing. The fans are going to love it! And you will too, after I finish building this Netflix shrine in your mind! So what do you say, Casey? Should we open up this adaptation and poke around? I think we better, but fair warning, there are spoilers ahead. Aha! It's time to ask, what's the difference? Season 1 pulls its arc primarily from the first three volumes of the comics. The Locke family suffers a tragedy when the father, Rendell Locke, is murdered by a troubled student. The family moves to Rendell's ancestral home, Keyhouse Manor, where the Locke children discover magical keys and an evil demon named Dodge who terrorizes the family in search of the mysterious Omega Key. It's still a story about grief and loss, blending elements of horror and fantasy with a dash of mystery at the center. But the show removes the most mature content from the books. The murder of Rendell Locke is a perfect example. Rendell is shot through the eye, Nina is violated by a second accomplice who, who later takes an axe to the head, while Tyler nearly beats Sam to death with a brick. It, it's pretty icky. The show drops the sexual assault of Nina, Rendell is shot through the stomach, and Nina conks Sam over the head with a hammer. I'd want to move after that. And so the family moves to Keyhouse Manor, which in the show is located in Matheson, Massachusetts, while in the comic the town is called Lovecraft. The town name in the comic of course refers to the famous horror writer H.P. Lovecraft, whose influence can be found all over the comic book series. The town's name Matheson refers to another of Joe Hill's heroes, Richard Matheson, whose novels touch on everything from haunted houses to erotic ghosts. Hello there. Ah! <sighs> The show generally features the same characters, but the Locke family matriarch Nina takes on a more investigative role. In her grief, she obsesses over the why of her husband's death, looking into his past and the mysterious deaths around town. We're still investigating Joe's death. It wasn't suicide. The show even invents a suspicious Omega mark shared by Rendell and his friends for her to unravel. But Nina's main concern in the comic is safety. She's mostly isolated in fear and paranoia, waiting for her husband's murderer to return. Sure, she collaborates with Detective Matuko, but he's the one trying to solve the murder puzzle. Not like his Netflix counterpart. I don't want to sound dismissive, but I've got to go with the evidence. <laughs> what a useless bag of donuts. And while the show touches on Nina's descent into alcoholism from the comic, it adds a twist of irony. By giving up her sobriety, Nina is able to retain the magical events that otherwise would have left her memory, which is good for investigation, but detrimental for her family. Kinsey and her friends skew more pop culture nerd Wiz of Oz, Ninja Turtles rather than the punk outcast from the comic. Take a hike, San Francisco! Which opens the door for some good old-fashioned teen hijinks not at all present in the comic, such as punishing the school bully. But of course, number one in the bully department is Dodge. In both mediums, Dodge is a corrupted spirit from the past who escapes the Lock Well House and uses violence and manipulation in a Machiavellian quest for power. But the show gives her new abilities that simultaneously make Dodge more powerful and less imposing. On one hand, Netflix Dodge is invulnerable to conventional weapons and appears to have super strength. Hey, hey kids, stop rolling! Stop rolling! Stop! Ow! Ow! But even with all that new power, Netflix Dodge is unable to steal a key from a member of the Locke family. You can't take them from us. Dodge has no such abilities or restraints in the comic. Stealing, murdering, manipulating. Whether Dodge is a woman or a man, he usually risks his or her, her own skin. He, it, I, I don't know what the pronoun is. Brenda Locke is dead. Season 1 unravels a present-day cover-up that would not be possible in the comics. It begins with the news of Rendell's death and a man familiar to fans of the comic, Mark Cho, who uses a key to destroy himself along with his entire house. He was the most trustworthy of us all, so it made sense that he should know where all the keys were hidden. That's why he killed himself, so no one could ever get inside his head to protect the keys. None of that's in the book since Mark Cho died back in 1988, and his friend Ellie couldn't be in on the plan because adults don't remember magic. That's pretty easy to change with a quick line of dialogue. We found a way to remember. Oh. Magic. Speaking of magic, let's talk about the keys. You love the keys. I do love the keys. Yeah, I know you do. The majority of which make it to the screen pretty faithfully. However, the skin key and the gender key from the comics are combined to create the identity key in the show. And that's what you chose. 
The head key, which is pivotal in both mediums, has the same ability, but is presented differently. In the comic, the top of one's head pops off, and materializes a miniature world full of memories and anthropomorphized emotions. In the show, however, the key opens a doorway into your mind, which is represented by meticulously crafted sets. Am I just super high? And since everything is life-sized, the anthropomorphic feelings found inside one's head pose more of a physical threat than their miniature comic book counterparts. Speaking of size, Season 1 does not include the giant key, which plays a huge part in the comic, if you'll pardon my pun. Instead, the show invents the matchstick key and the mirror key. Mom? The mirror key traps oneself in a reflective prison. It's a clever portrayal of losing yourself in despair. Cody? The matchstick key is pretty self-explanatory, but its secret ability is to replace the bloodier moments from the comic. For instance, Sam Lesser escapes prison in the comic by introducing a guard's eyeballs to a pair of scissors. Needless to say, they did not care for each other. But in the show, wow, look, whoa, look, oh, it's magic. You're not gonna make me drink this alone, are you? Regardless of whether you read the comic, Netflix hopes to keep you in the dark in their villain's full scheme by changing Dodge's strategy. You have no idea what's coming. They even throw out a false lead with Kenzie's friend Zadie Wells. Could this be a reference to Zach Wells, Dodge's alter ego in the comic? <gasps> By the end of the season, it's revealed that Gabe is Dodge. <gasps> By utilizing the identity key, the show is able to combine the romantic triangle between Kenzie, Scott, and Gabe with Zach's infiltration and seduction in the comic. Season 1's climactic square-off between the locks and Dodge's army of shadows is derived from the comic's third volume. In the show, Dodge is defeated all too easily by the lock kids, and using the Omega key, they open the mysterious door that corrupted Dodge in the first place and throw her inside. The season finale reveals that it was Ellie who was tossed through the door after Dodge changed her appearance with the identity key. So, rather than Ellie's gruesome demise that occurs much later in the comic, the show utilizes her end as a bit of a misdirection. Didn't see that coming, did ya? It's a long while before the Omega door is opened in the comics. Instead, Tyler uses the giant key to defeat Dodge. Dodge simply just has to try, try again. Finally, the show sets up a season two arc that has the potential to take the series into a different direction. A demon escapes into Eve's body, giving Dodge, or er, er, Gabe, an ally in his quest for dominion over the keys. While the comic does feature other kids infected by the Omega door, it doesn't occur until the final book, so it's possible the show has an altogether different ending in mind for the series. Obviously, Netflix hopes Lock and Key will be another long-running hit like Stranger Things. Fans are gonna love it! The show offers more investigative opportunities for our heroes to explore, and alters the villain's evil plan. Leaning into fantasy so that every member of the family can watch and enjoy. Hey, kids! It's me, the wizard of Netflix! Actually, I think you've been in there long hey, enough. Hey, hey, let's, watch the suit! Watch the suit! Yeah, no, no, no. It's my second favorite suit! So what do you think of the changes? Sound off in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for What's the Difference right here on Cinefix.